What's happening guys? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. As you can tell by the description, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking jump packs. What are they? What they've come to be? You know, back in history, the jump packs that you can see were these a lot bigger, bulky suitcase-like things that weigh like 35 pounds, but battery technology these days has progressed exponentially. We are putting batteries in smaller sizes that is reaching peak amp output that are just the same amount as those bigger, heavier, chunkier batteries. So I'm gonna go through three of these today in three different price points so you guys can get an idea of what they are, how much they cost, and what kind of output you're gonna be looking at for the money that you're spending. Like I said, historically in the way of booster packs, these are typically what you saw. These things weigh about 30 pounds or so, 25, 30 pounds. They put out at max 1500 peak amp hours. And you know, they're just, they work, but they're big and clunky and you know, kind of a pain to carry around. So what we've moved to nowadays are jump packs that are like this. As you can see for hand size, these things have gotten pretty small. Yes, there is a price difference and yes, there is a difference in the amount of uh, amp hours and output that you're going to and how much you spend on these that's going to make a big difference in what you're looking for. So we've got something a little bit on the lower end, mid range and a higher end. There's obviously the spectrum is so much more wide than you could imagine, but we're not going to go through all of those just you know a good mid-range of what generally you're going to be looking for with your day-to-day -day applications in these first one we're going to come to is our lower line one this is our and, and by lower line i'm not saying lower quality or anything along those lines but the more cost effective one is our audu this one has a 500 amp max peak output for your vehicle this one has a flashlight, has two USB outputs, the uh, 15 volt one amp input, and a 12 volt output as well that you can put a little cigarette lighter on. Got a battery indicator to tell you how charged the battery is. Nice compact little design and one this size, you really could fit it in your pocket if you wanted to. Uh, these things are at a really good price range. They are right at $60 available on Amazon. And I'm gonna be putting the link the, to these in the description as well. So you guys can check them out. The battery rating on this one for charging through the USBs, like you could charge your cell phones. Uh, this one is rated at right at 13,800 milliamp hours. So when you're charging your phone battery, the average phone battery these days is between 3,500 and 4,000 milliamp hours. So this one is gonna charge your phone or whatever it is, roughly, you know, four or five times. So it's a really good charge pack just to have in your car for those people who always let their cell phone die. It's good for that and then also to have for a jump pack as well. Uh, something that's standard across the range between all of these and pretty much any jump pack that you get anymore is going to be this uh, version of circuit protection. So I have got a vehicle behind me that we're going to be testing these out on. Uh, this is a circuit protector that goes in and it's got our cable clamps that you would connect to your battery as well. The circuit protection in this is able to sense the voltage and the polarity of the batteries that you have hooked up to. So when you hook this thing up, if you have it hooked up incorrectly, you will see a red light and it will beep at you telling you, hey, big dummy, you've got this thing hooked up wrong. Check it again, hook it up right, read the damn manual. But, so it's really easy to do. 
and then they also have a boost button that if you have something that's you know kind of testy and doesn't want to get real great connection this will kind of bypass some of the circuitry and the safety sensors in it this one has that function the duracell one does not have that safety bypass the genius boost hd does also have the bypass as well so we're going to hook this thing up our test vehicle that we have is a 2017 Chrysler Town & Country minivan and I've already discharged uh, the battery in this system. The standard battery is rated at 730 cold cranking amps and it does have a 3.6 liter engine so that's going to be rated at right around 290-295 horsepower which is a pretty good sized motor for what you guys are going to be using these jump packs that's the range that you're kind of looking for. You can get bigger jump packs that are for bigger motors, diesel engines and such, but the smaller jump packs that we're kind of going over are going to be for motors, you know, up to this maybe a V8, but not really rated for that. So these are the ones that you're going to be testing. So I will get this first one hooked up and we will show you how well it works. All right, so we're going to show you guys what we've got to work with. Uh, as you can see, testing it here, we're at like 10-ish volts right around there on our battery. And this thing's been discharged for a little while. So this is simulating something along the lines of you just left something on overnight and it's, you know, kind of discharged. So first off, I want to show you that if you hook this thing up wrong, what happens? So the red light lights up that you have the reverse polarity. It says no dummy hook it up the right way. So we will hook it up to the correct way. And then it says it is correct, it is good to go, and you should be able to start the vehicle. So before, no start. And if we hook the jump pack up, we'll see how easy it starts with the jump pack. It is said is correct. So that made it pretty simple. Like I said, we're only a couple of volts down, you know, three or four volts down. So it's not way, way dead, but that's the other safety feature that these things have to be able to read the correct voltage and the correct polarity of the battery there has to be some voltage left in this battery if there is not it can't read the polarity and therefore it will not allow this to start because it doesn't know if you have it hooked up right or wrong so that is the one downfall to these uh, jump starters is that if your battery is dead dead like below three volts it will not work unless you have a, an override or a boost function to say, I know what I'm doing, go ahead and put out the voltage anyways. So if it has below three volts, you're kind of out of the loop on a couple of the other ones. But this one has a boost button that if you were at a dead, dead battery, it will charge it up. It doesn't have a whole lot of output because it's only at, you know, peak 500 amps. I'd say it's probably maybe at 200 amps after your peak but that's probably what you're looking at for something this size. So as you can see that worked, that's what I said before, it was rated at 13,800 milliamp hours for charging uh, just standard cell phones and everything like that. It comes in this nice little case that you can kind of put everything away in, put that in there, zip it all up, and you can have that case to put in your little glove compartment. It's got your other charge cables that it does come with, which that's a pretty neat little add-on. Everything from an old iPhone to the newer iPhone to a uh, newer mini micro HDMI cable. So pretty cool. And then your other charging cables that you need for the unit as well. So all in all, pretty good unit, especially when you're talking about 59, 60 bucks. So that is the jump pack from Audu. The next one we're gonna be going to is kind of a midline one from Duracell. Uh, this one is 80 bucks on Amazon, 79.95 I believe. Uh, this one is rated at 1100 
peak amps on starting. It is rated at right around 18,000, I think, right around there, milliamp hours on the battery uh, capacity. So this one is gonna charge things a little bit more. It also does have the flashlight on the front, strobe functions and everything just the same as the other one. Here in the front, this one has an HDMI out, or the micro HDMI and the USB. I'm sorry, this one is for charging. Charging only. This is your USB output. Uh, this kit does not come with any extra cables other than the one to charge and the one other USB for it, and then these for your jump pack purposes. So, like I said, 18,000 milliamp hours for cell phone and little batteries for charging those. So this is rated a bit higher on that aspect. And the other one was um, rated at 500 amps peak output. This one is rated at 1100 amps peak output. Roughly the same size, a little bit bulkier. I'll get this one to compare. So about the same size. This one's a little bit thinner. So, and they weigh about the same as well. So we're gonna hook the Duracell up to the van after I get it discharged back down to the same exact level. So we're working at a van with this same exact voltage discharged. All right, so we'll see where we're at now. Voltage wise, we're at the same voltage, right around nine volts. So we are discharged. Make sure it won't start. Just clicks. So we are low. And we'll see what the circuit protection on this one does. So a little red light flashes and it says, no dummy, you've got it hooked up backwards. Now, unlike the other two chargers, this one does not have a, an override or a boost function. So this one is good for your teenage kids who like to push the buttons and try to figure out how things work and shock each other. This one cannot and will not shock you in any way, shape or form. So this one is foolproof. You can't do it wrong. And so when we hook this one up correctly, we can see that we have a little green LED light that comes on. Tells you, yes, you've got it hooked up correctly. So, we've got this thing on, powered on, full battery. See if her starts are up. Starts are up. And as you can hear, this one was beeping right there. This one beeps also and flashes a green light to remind you, hey, this thing started up, don't forget to unhook your clamps. So you don't drive off, you know, close the hood and drive off with it. It beeps and tells you, hey, make sure you unhook this thing again. So that's pretty cool. It's got, you know, the extra safety measures. So for your teenage kids, I would say this is probably one of the best ones that you can't mess this thing up. You absolutely cannot. It's rated for a decent amount. You know, a little bit more than the Audu uh, jump pack. So this is a good mid-range one that I would recommend to anybody. Um, let's go see what kind of case it comes with. Okay, so the Duracell, it comes with the battery, the jump packs, and the charging cable for the unit and it comes in this sleek little case that you could stuff everything in, cinch it up, and put it in your vehicle. This stuff is double lined, and it seems pretty pretty heavy duty. It's not a chintzy you know, little bag, but it is a bag as compared to the Audu that has a little bit of a harder case to it. So that's the Duracell jump pack, and now we're gonna be moving on to our big boy. This one is the highest line of the bunch. This one is rated at 2000 peak amps output. This is the Genius Boost GB70. Uh, this one runs $189, so it is a little over $100 more than the last one. It has outputs 
This is one that hooks up to a cigarette lighter uh, cable that it comes with and a USB as well. Inputs, you have the micro USB and a 12 volt input as well. So this one has a 12 volt input that you can charge this one back up off of your car 12 volts, which is usually actually a little bit faster than hooking it up to just a micro USB um, wall charger input, something along those lines. So this one, again, power function. It does have a light a lot brighter than the other ones. But again, this thing is a lot bigger, heavier duty uh, battery pack. Uh, this one is rated at 27,000 milliamp hours when you're talking about charging your little cell phones and stuff at that 2.1 to 2.4 um, amp uh, range. So this one is also quite a bit bulkier as well. So size-wise, we are... Now, quite a bit wider. We are half again as wide and another inch and a half to two inches longer than the other ones as well. The cables are thicker and the clamps are larger as well. This one does not come with any kind of big, you know, fancy little case or anything to hide it in like the other ones. This one has the battery indicator as well, telling you at what percentage the battery is hooked up to an on and off button and then it also has the little uh, the flashlight one and then the little exclamation point indicator this is your bypass just like was on the Audu one as well that you can bypass it if you have a battery that is very very dead so that's a cool function so size wise it is quite a bit bigger so let's go hook it up to the van and see what we do function wise so voltage wise, I know this one is a lot bigger battery. So we're gonna give this one a little bit more of a work for our money. And I've got this thing discharged down to 5.8, 5.9 volts. So as you can hear, the IPM is clicking away because it's got super low voltage. It wouldn't even tell me to let, allow me to turn the key and the function off. So it's pretty dead. It, here in a couple minutes, it would go flat out and it'd be super dead. So. We're gonna hook it up backwards here, and we see we get a little indicator exclamation point saying, dummies, you've hooked it up backwards. So, that's good. And we will hook it up the correct way then. And then we will power the unit on. It sees that it has the full charging, and the clicking is stopped see how well it charges and starts. That started up very fast. Now, I'm gonna have to say that I have used this one quite a bit in the past. I've purchased this one for more use in my general day-to-day -day use here in the shop. So I know what this thing can do. I have pushed this thing to the limits. I have used this thing in temperatures that are much colder than, you know, normal people would want and it works fantastically. I've even used this one up to a Ford diesel truck that was pretty dead in the winter time. We had to use this and another small jump pack on a diesel that was absolutely dead, like had no battery juice at all. So, you know, one of these and then a smaller jump pack did that. But these, I wouldn't hesitate to use on Hemis, V8s, even um, my diesel truck, the Duramax, I've used ones like these to jump those as well. Actually, one of the guys up at Truck Must Masters meet that had the Dodge up there, he needed a jump and that came from this pack right here. So it works and trust me on this one, this one is tried and tested and I would vouch for this one any day of the week. If you can muster up the extra 100 bucks on it, this thing has the extra ass to go along with it. Well, that's all I've got in the way of jump packs for showing you guys. I want you guys to leave a little comment down below. Let me know which one of these three, if you guys have used any of these before, how well they have been, how well they work for you, or something along the lines where 
hey, I'd like to see some bigger ones or I'd like to see some smaller ones in the future. I might be able to do some more testing, but I just chose these three. I had a, a couple of these donated and I used the other a little bit larger one on my day-to-day -day use. I think this would show a good roundabout usage of the jump packs that you guys would be able to purchase in your and use in your day-to-day -day lives. And so, I don't know. We'll see which ones you guys think that you like the best. For the price, you guys let me know which one you guys like the best and which one you think would work better for your application. Thanks for tuning in again. This place has been absolutely amazing. We've done a whole lot with each other. Uh, we've just cleared 5,000 subscribers. Again, my thanks is just, I, I can't thank you guys enough. It's an awesome feeling to know that I have so many people that enjoy the kind of content that I like because I wouldn't put these videos out if I didn't really believe in them and I didn't really think that it would be good content for you guys, which is one of the reasons why I put my own toolbox together for you guys who are saying, oh, why didn't you guys have the Snapple guy put it together? Well, what kind of shitty content would that leave for you guys? I like to give you guys some cool stuff to look at and cool stuff to learn from as well. So hopefully this video was a little bit educational. You guys learned a little bit something and you got some product testing that you might even use in your day-to-day -day life. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you haven't done that because I'm gonna be coming out with a whole lot more content for you guys coming up. I've got a ton more in the works, trust me on that one, with the Duramax, with tools, with Snap-on tools and my toolbox in general. We got quite a few more things coming out in the next couple of weeks for that one. If you guys haven't checked out, I do have a Facebook store as well where I am selling my Rust Belt Mechanic uh, little vinyl stickers and some uh, diesel stickers as well that I've come out with. I don't know, tell me what you guys think about those. Check me out on Instagram, I'm over there as well. Yeah, that's where you guys can message me or email me. Thanks for tuning in again, and you guys stay awesome.